Have you ever wondered why a narcissist seems incapable of actually showing the nice side of the good person that you're like, I fell in love with this version. Like, why are you not showing up different? Where they only reveal their true colors when their mask slips. And you're like, why can't they show me the nice guy? What's actually going on there? If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness of narcissistic abuse and how it wrecks and destroys a lot of lives. I was the person that was the nice guy up until marriage, and then as soon as the marriage night happened, it switched, and I was no longer the nice guy, no longer cared, no longer showed, no longer showed up in the relationship in a positive way, no longer exemplified any type of care that I'd pretended to have to start off with, but instead it changed really rapidly because I was only concerned about what I wanted. I was in the chase of getting a person, and once I got them, I didn't know how to show up as a man. And I didn't know how to show up honest. As a result, the marriage fell apart. As a result, my wife ended up leaving years later after multiple affairs and multiple levels of abuse. This piece of narcissistic abuse is something that wrecks marriages, that wrecks relationships, that wrecks co-working spaces, everything. Because it's so entitled and so selfish and so hard for there to be a nice guy version that even comes out. So we're going to talk about that some today. What we do is we try to help people break the trauma bond, get out of the rumination, and ultimately have goals and boundaries to set them free, moving forward in the direction they want to do. If you're interested in knowing more about that, you can go to claritychallenge.net or click the link down below to help you actually see the process, the step-by-step -step process that we do, and to hear from other survivors that have gone through that process. Well, diving in today, we're going to talk about this piece of why the narcissist can't show you the nice guy. You're like, I just want that nice guy back. That first version, like the person that was there the first week, the first month, the first year, I just want that guy back. Why can't that happen? Okay. First point that I want you to know is the mask. The mask that a narcissist does and has is one of the biggest reasons why the nice guy won't come back, why it's not even possible. Now, the mask for a narcissist is a version of themselves that they're producing for the world to see while they hide behind it to be able to hide the guilt and the shame of who they actually are and hide behind it for the abusive natures. This is why a lot of times you'll be going out and about and the narcissist seems like he's the best person ever. And then when you get behind closed doors, you're like, whoa, this person actually doesn't care about me. It's completely different. But make you feel confused about it, make you feel gaslit about it. A narcissist wears a very carefully constructed mask to manipulate and control other people. A lot of times the mask is in a collection of a lot of different versions of personalities that they've picked up from movies, from music, from people, from past relationships, and things that they're like, if I do this, it'll get, let me last a little bit longer in the relationship. The whole goal is to control other people and to control the image of what other people see about them. Like this sometimes will portray them as being charming, kind, empathetic individuals. However, this whole piece of a display, it's merely a tool to manipulate, gain control, gain power over other people. Behind the mask, that's where you have a deep-seated piece of control, looking for validation, running from shame and guilt, and as a result, coming out in abusive ways to be able to control that, to be able to manipulate what you actually see. Okay, when this piece comes out of like, wait a second, the mask is incongruent with actually what's underneath the desired image, it starts to threaten the fragile ego, it starts to threaten, wait a second, they seem big, they seem like they have all this ego, but in reality, they actually don't. Okay, Narcissus is going to go to great lengths to actually produce and put this like effort and view and show and mask up to paint themselves as the perfect partner. Like, I look amazing. Like, this is the best thing ever. We are soulmates. All these things are connected in the initial stage of the relationship to tie you in, to reel you into the relationship. They're going to use like the love bombing phase of getting you a lots of affection, gifts, compliments, creating this idealized version of themselves. Okay, it's idealized. It's not real. There's not depth to it. There's not honesty. Okay, it's only just let me project this version of myself to you so that you buy it, so that we connect, so that we get together. But as the relationship starts to progress, the mask will start to slip. Common places where the mask slips, side note, common places, okay? You get engaged, uh, you start to date, you move in together, you have a baby, you get pregnant, or you get married, okay? Those are like common places where you'll start to see something slip. 
or if you dealt the narcissist, no. Okay, but there's different nuances. Okay, the whole aspect is you'll see it slip and you'll be like, wait a second, what was that? And it'll get explained away. It'll get pushed to the side and you'll seem crazy because you're like, okay, yeah, it wasn't that big a deal. He was just having a bad day. Okay, but then you start to see this more consistently. Now, another reason, why won't the narcissist show you the nice guy? First, as the next aspect is the aspect of lack of genuine empathy. Narcissists don't have empathy. You've probably heard that. It's very touted a lot with the aspect of narcissists, no empathy, okay? Yes, it's true. There's also nuances to it that narcissists, there's a lot that have empathy, but they're unwilling to acknowledge or identify with the needs of others, which is even worse because then it's like, I see it, I feel it to the degree that I should do something about it, but I won't because that will actually show that I'm a bad person. That will actually show behind the mask of me being a great person that have actually been abusive. Can't do that because that's shame and guilt. So still gonna rage, still gonna lash out, still gonna walk away, ghost, all this kind of stuff because that's easier than dealing with hard stuff. That's easier than being honest, okay? Now, the aspect of like empathy, like it should be fundamental to all humans, right? Of connecting, of understanding someone else. But narcissists struggle to experience this genuine empathy and this emotional empathy of like connecting with you. So for me, a lot of my empathy comes from the aspect of cognitive empathy. I understand now because now I'm starting to look outside of myself versus it only being about me. When it was only about me, I didn't care at all. As a result, like you could be upset, you could be crying, you'd be frustrated. I'm like, okay, like doesn't really matter. Now, when you're upset and you're crying, I don't start crying. I don't start feeling the same exact things you're feeling, but I cognitively can understand and see, okay, that sucks. Like you're struggling with this. You might need some empathy in this moment. Okay. So it's a little bit different, little nuances of how it goes. Okay. Narcissists are primarily focused on their own needs, desires, insecurities. Like what do I actually do? And it leaves little room for you to actually be understood or for them to even show genuine care about you. Okay, think of it this way. You've been in a place where you've shared something you're struggling with, something you're concerned about, even in the relationship. You've expressed emotions and your feelings, and he responded like dismissive. Like, okay, like why do I even care about this? Okay, he's turned the conversation back to himself. Okay, you're feeling unheard? Yeah, no, I totally get that because I feel unheard because you actually don't even hear me. Like all of a sudden it gets flipped around and you're like, where was my chance to actually be able to say things? Where was the validation of what I'm struggling with <sighs> gets sucked away to the narcissist, okay? Um, the lack of empathy becomes evident as they fail to even connect with you or care about your needs, your emotions, your feelings, and definitely don't come through with providing meaningful support, okay? Now, the other piece that I wanna be able to highlight really quick is this idea of the inability to sustain the illusion, Okay, this is kind of referencing back to the mask, but the narcissist is painting this picture. They're projecting this illusion on the wall of this is what the relationship's like. This is what I'm like. Narcissists rely on this to maintain control over the relationship. Okay, but sustaining the illusion of a nice person requires a lot of effort. Like you have to actually get real. You have to actually get honest. You have to get vulnerable. Ugh, don't want that. Okay, narcissist is annoyed and afraid and frustrated of all these aspects of being honest and real and vulnerable because of what it exposes. It exposes the shit that's inside. Like it exposes the stuff that I don't really care. It exposes the stuff that you're an inconvenience. It exposes all this that it's all about me. So it exposes things that like they don't want to have exposed because that goes in conflict with the mask, goes in conflict with the image that they've created. Now, this can happen over a short period of time, and this is where we see small changes, okay? Changes and modifications in the behavior, but you don't see true transformation. That's the difference. So the narcissist runs away from the honesty, the vulnerability, because they're scared and because they don't want to actually transform their lives. Instead, let me change this for a moment, and then I'm going to revert right back because I don't really care to actually do it. It's just to keep you. It's just to manipulate you in the relationship. Okay, you're going to see this because their true nature starts to seep through. They're going to resort to these abusive tactics, gaslighting, demeaning, just to do anything to maintain control and maintain a superior dominating position over you. Over time, you're going to see this aspect of the true colors come out, like, like as they engage with the emotional manipulation, the belittling remarks, unpredictable outbursts. you slowly see it start to come out and you're like, wait a second, because they have an inability to maintain this facade long term. Like this niceness piece, it won't last long term. 
Like there has to be the belittling. There has to be the pieces coming through because it starts to leak out of their current personality. What this does is it starts to confuse you though because you're seeing niceness and then a knife in the back. You're seeing care and then they're cheating on you. You're seeing this one aspect and then they're doing the exact opposite, which produces cognitive dissonance. You don't know what to believe. Do I, does he love me? Does he not love me? Does he care? Does he not care? All these pieces start to rack your brain, produces the trauma bond, gets you addicted to a toxic person, literally like an addiction piece to this toxic person. You try to leave, you come back over and over and over again because you're still hoping and thinking that there's potential for the nice guy to be there. Once the mask has slipped, once you have fallen off the pedestal the nurse has built for you, once you've become all bad and they no longer care or show any aspect of actually the nice guy anymore, it's not coming back. Walking that back in the narcissist's mind is almost an impossibility without a crap ton of therapy and a lot of self-work and a lot of meditation and a lot of work on themselves internally of the story they believe and probably also a lot of God. Because otherwise, this whole piece of like, you're all bad in my mind, never going to change. It might manipulate for a moment to get you back, but it's never going to change. Because that has already been set. Narcissists think in black and white. You're either all good or you're all bad, but you don't go back and forth. You start off all good, then you become all bad, then you're alienated from the narcissist, then they don't care, or they just come back and keep using you over and over and over. Sorry, a lot, lot, lot of topics at the very end there, okay? But the end of the day, narcissists won't show you that they're the nice guy. They won't keep that consistently because it's incongruent with the mask they've created. They don't actually care about you. There's no genuine empathy there, and they're unable to sustain the illusion for a long term. If you're at the place where you're like, I'm confused, I'm stuck in the trauma bond, I don't know what to do, reach out. Go to www.rawmotivations.com, grab a one-on-one. -on -one. We can see if you'd be a good fit for us to work together and script out your healing process and to move forward. Joining and moving into our Thriver community is one of the biggest impacts that you can actually make on your life because of the transformation that happens as you learn to rewire the story that you believe, break the trauma bond, get out of the rumination, reduce the triggers and the impact that they have on your life, and ultimately be free. Be free in your mindset, be free emotionally, mentally, physically from the toxicity that has been racking you and your body for such a long period of time www.rawmotivations.com. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, rate, review, share this podcast with someone you never know when you might be the dealer of hope in someone else's life when you actually share this. If you listen to the podcast, thanks so much. Y'all have a blessed day.